Hi, it's Jenny Gailey with Grace Footsteps. Today I want to talk to you about love. You know, love is something that I am challenged by every day. At the end of the day, the Holy Spirit often shows me where I could have loved more. Or he lovingly shows me where I was self-centered. And our love walk will go through ups and downs. And despite that, God loves us the same. His love for us is unconditional. And, you know, the word, when we read about love, it's like a sword. And, and it shows us. It divides the soul from the spirit, and it shows us where we fall short. But it also points us to the source of love, who is Jesus Christ. So let's look at 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13, starting in verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. Okay, so I'll stop right there. I think of like, <laughs> you know that little monkey toy, that mechanical little wound up banging the cymbals, the monkey toy? And it's like, have you ever heard someone speaking and you, you can't sense their love or you'll hear like a, a sermon or something and, and it just sounds like a noisy cymbal. You know, you, it's like, I hear what you're saying, but I don't feel the love. You know, and um, so yeah, we can we can just be like a, a monkey that that chatters and grins and speaks, and um, but our words are falling to the ground. So so yeah, we have to definitely make sure that we carry love um, wherever we go, and that we're just not chattering. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. You know, I love prophecies. I love faith. But is this not so true? Because if you have all the faith in the world, and you push away all the doubt, and you move all the mountains, and if you're speaking all these prophetic uh, wisdoms and mysteries and, and knowledge, and, um, but you don't have love, you miss the point. You know, any prophecy not given in love is going to fall to the ground. Okay, so let's go on. Verse 3, if I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Okay, so this shows to me, this is, this is sacrifice, right? So remember the verse, um, obedience is better than sacrifice? Um, because this, this shows that even sacrifice without love, you're still operating in, in a dead work without love. Okay, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. Does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. You know, love is patient. Wow. Wow. Patience is the epitome of love. If you look at someone who is really patient, I always, I always say, you know, my husband is very patient with me. I have... Uh, you know, met different people, but uh, the patience of Adam, he is, he's very patient with me, and I've always thought that, and I've always been drawn to that, because I need a lot of patience. You know, long-suffering, um, and th this is an interesting, uh, really interesting study on patience, so I encourage you to study about patience. It says long-suffering literally means patient endurance under provocation. So th this is a whole nother type of love. This is not just, so even outside of marriage, let, let's say you're in a situation and someone, I don't know who, but someone is provoking you, okay? And they're provoking you and you're going, 
wow, this person is being really rude. Can you love them while they're being rude to you? Or are you just going to give them the cold shoulder or give them what you think they deserve? Um, but if you can love someone in the face of, of being persecuted and being provoked, that is true love. We see a picture of this type of love, this long-suffering um, in Acts with Stephen. You know, Stephen was literally had stones, he was being stoned, had stones hurled at him. He kept trying to tell him about Jesus. They closed his ears. They didn't want to hear it. And, um, you know, so he cried out as he was being stoned. He cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Wow, what love. What love. You know, most of us would be, Lord, go get them. <laughs> but no, <laughs> he said, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. You know, that's a type and shadow of, uh, of Jesus Christ, of, of his love, how he forgives us when we don't deserve it. Okay, so does not envy or boast. Love does not envy or boast. Have you ever been envious when someone prospers or when someone prospers, are you celebrating with them? Are you loving them? Are you truly loving them or are you envious? And then when you're prospering, do you boast or are you humble about it? It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. Oh, I need to work on that one. I do insist on my own way a lot. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. Then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now, faith, hope, and love abide. These three. But the greatest of these is love. Praise God. So, you know, when we are speaking, you know, you can be a great orator. You can give a great speech. You can make so much sense. And you can even move people to tears. But are you moving them to Jesus? Are you moving them to love? And are you loving? Are you truly loving? I know that I fall short of what love is supposed to look like. And I just pray that um, I move closer and closer into this love walk. So, praise God.